and uh, we'd like to welcome back for the first time in 2023, Dylan Butler. What's the what's the mug this morning, Dylan? Ah, hang on, just get it off the heater there. Might not be a, a fan favorite in the Atlanta <laughs> area. But we'll, go, we'll go to Yankees. Yankees mug. Okay, so uh, Jared is here. What's up, Jared? Uh, and we've been discussing MLS y kinds of things. Uh, we got into the the Latino. literally just hanging on by you know by the edge of the saddle as all of this news is breaking constantly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the Felipe Cardenas uh, bolo about Marcelino Moreno possibly heading to Coritiba and uh, keeping an eye on that. And we got into the discussion about Latif Blessing heading to New England and the possibility of Aaron Long to LAFC. When you, when you see Latif Blessing heading east to help out Bruce Arena, and Aaron Long heading west to go with the champs. When you look at those two deals, I know they're not blended together, but in their mutual exclusive exclusivity, what do you think? Uh, I think a uh, huge move for LAFC. Uh, I'm not as sold of blessing to New England being a big move. Um, Cause they still have other issues to, to work out. Right. Like, um, they have, they have, I mean, you know, where, I guess the thing is, you know, where will he fit? Is he going to be, uh, go back to the wing where, where he played originally, he got turned into, um, a little bit of a do it all midfielder. Uh, is he, is he in that mix there in the midfield Ooh. joining, uh, Polster and heel? Um, not sure. Right. So I, I think, I think they still have other, big needs and concerns um the biggest of all is 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 kind of having two forwards uh who can't play in the field at the same time and neither are wingers right so um does bruce arena go with a formation change you know there's a lot of <clears throat> ton of questions there for them so um the more concrete is is long to lafc i think is a great move i think he's gonna uh, be yeah good. <laughs> Be, be plugged in as a as a as a starter right away. Clearly, um, uh, you know it's it's uh, I think it's an indictment certainly on the Red Bulls um, who are, are never in the mix to seemingly re-sign a guy. Right? <laughs> like uh, uh, here here was a guy who um, uh, was a captain, was uh, obviously in the national team, or is on the national team. He, he's, uh, you know, what, 30 years old, right? So there's still a good amount of soccer left in him, but um, that's not the Red Bulls' way. Uh, so so big move for LAFC. Um, Seattle were also rumored to have been in that mix. Um, would have been a great move for them as well. So um, I, I, think, uh, I think big addition for LAFC, and I think probably a plus for New England, but... Um, you know, there, there again, still work to do there. All right, Jarrett, go ahead and hit it because uh, the news did come across. <clears throat> yeah, we just actually got this in our inbox. Uh, Atlanta United and Emerson Heinemann have agreed to mer- mutually terminate the contract. So Emerson Heinemann back on the market. Um, one of the bodies in Atlanta's midfield is now gone. Um, Dylan, I don't know how you felt about Heinemann. I know he's had a he's had an interesting a uh, career coming out of the academy in Dallas, went to Europe, uh, played really well in Scotland for Rangers, and never really seemed to latch on at Bournemouth. And then I thought he had some good moments here, but I've argued for the last year that you can't make the roster when you're on a training table, and that's where he's been. For sure, yeah. I mean, I think uh, you've said it perfectly, right? When he's been healthy and he's been on the field, he's been productive, right? He, he's been a, a quality part of that midfield, but – um, those, uh, those times, unfortunately have been few and far between. So, um, I think, uh, I think a good move, obviously for, for Atlanta, we'll see now where, where Hyman ends up, but, um, yeah, there's a lot of pieces there in Atlanta. It's, uh, I'm sure you guys have been speaking about it too, but, um, there'll, there'll be a, they'll, I think there'll be a flurry of moves, um, there's there's a lot of players who who have similar uh, attributes maybe right like you, you need some different 
players as well. And, and obviously, you know, Garth Lagaway coming in and, and the whole Joseph thing, uh, th there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of uh, intrigue around yes. Atlanta United uh, as this off season or as this preseason is about to begin. Yeah. Uh, it is. It's definitely turning into moving day as some folks are saying <laughs> on, on the Twitch pitch this morning, but uh, you know, now that we're in January, and and right in right soccer for good OG uh, Hyman hasn't really been quite right since COVID since he since he tested positive and uh, other moves that we have seen uh, a bear to Seattle was yeah one, one that I wanted to get in uh, to discussion with you about because mm -hmm. Seattle has never been afraid to to try to bring in the the deal that they think will shake uh, shake the foundations and they did it with uh, Lagerway and Weibel bringing in Albert Rusnak. And now it's uh, Craig's first signature move in bringing in Ebert to Seattle. So what we just said about Hyman, um, you can you can plug and play here with with Ebert, right? Like when he's healthy, he's been very very good, right? He's been a quality striker in MLS. Unfortunately, um, you know there were major questions about if he would be the same productive forward as he was before the <clears throat> ACL injury, right? So um I think uh and also is he is he a regular starter? He won't be, right? In Seattle. Obviously you've got Rui Diaz there. Um so I think uh I think they splashed a lot of cash to get a backup, but you know, considering also Rui Diaz's injury concerns, you know, you've got a guy who will probably play half the games this year, right? Or I'm sorry, should start half the games this year. So, and the 7,000 games that they have on their schedule <laughs> start in Morocco. <laughs> exactly. So, uh, yeah, I think a huge move for Seattle. I think it's great. I think when you can get a gay, guy, guy like Aber as, as a backup to Rui Diaz, that's, that's solid. I mean, certainly an upgrade. No, no, uh, Listen, uh, no disrespect to the dancing bear, right? But uh, certainly an upgrade from Will Bruin in that in that in that depth chart. So big for them. And NYCFC is another um, kind of almost turning into the most interesting team coming into a preseason, right? Along with like CF Montreal, we just mentioned Atlanta, but man, right? Like so many pieces gone from an MLS cup winning team. Uh, and you've got to think, well, clearly there's going to be some incoming pieces. Um, and there's still big pieces that have left to be signed. Sean Johnson, Alex Collins are both, um, free agents, right? So, um, very, very interesting for the citizens, no doubt. No doubt. And, uh, another piece of news for Atlanta United, uh, SK Beveren announces Tyler Wolf is going to be recalled early from his loan. He appeared seven times for the Belgian side this fall. And so it's like, okay, every, I feel like everybody's finally back from vacation. You're, <laughs> yeah. you're, you're back from your vacation yeah. for, uh, for the first time. And, uh, you know, I, I give you all the credit. I'll just go ahead and I'll say it right now. With all of these moves happening here in the 10 o'clock hour, I'm just going to give you all the credit in the world, Dylan, about everything that's been going on. Thank uh, you. What other what other moves while you were on vacation and we were all trying to figure out what uh, holiday gifts we needed to buy folks at the last minute? What what other what other plot lines and player moves uh, kind of raised your your uh, the the Dylan Butler eyebrow as we, we headed <laughs> to moving day here? The people's eyebrow. Uh, it is the it is the soccer people's eyebrow with Dylan Butler. <clears throat> I don't know. It's a good question. I, uh... I mean, you got Brad Smith going to Houston. You've got the idea of, uh, I think, Mateus Click is being mentioned at D.C. United. Wayne Rooney, as a matter of fact, is now uh, odds-on favorite to take over at Everton <laughs> when they finally get rid of Frank Lampard. Uh, it's like all of these, all of these moving pieces and, and little things that are happening, but it's teams that are, it's individual teams that are doing things. It's not just one team that's making big splashes. You've got a lot of teams who aren't wasting any time. And like in the case of Houston, they can't afford to waste any time because of Ben Olsen and new ownership and all these kinds of things. And they've got to get help for Ache Ache and Ferreira up top. I mean, it's you've got a lot of teams that aren't wasting any time here, I guess, because it's almost FOMO. It's almost fear of missing out where, oh, my God, we better address something before somebody else does. You know, it's, it seems like that's 
everybody's jumping in early in January. There may not be a whole lot of news as we get to to training camp and exhibition matches at the end of the month. Uh, yeah, no, I mean, <clears throat> um, it's uh, crazy, Dylan, and I give you all the credit. Flurry of moves, certainly a lot of outgoing, you know, like Houston and DC. I mean, they, they've um, they've almost tried to go the uh, the um, Miami way, right? <laughs> of just like offloading Careful. half their Careful. rosters. Careful. Oh, oh, you're the you're the Chris Henderson Miami, and not the previous uh, Miami. Okay, just check. I was, <laughs> yeah. Wait a minute! You're, it's, it's, I was waiting for where you were going. It's like the offloading from that. Yeah, not not having yeah, no um, 90p uh, route. No, uh, you know, and, the, and then the coaching, <clears throat> the coaching carousel is another one. Like Lasada, I don't think anyone saw that coming. No, to Montreal, um, which again adds additional intrigue there <laughs> with Montreal. Uh, you know, they lose so many pieces. Mm-hmm. Potentially, can continue to lose more. Um, and now, and now obviously a new coach there. Um, yeah, I mean, man, as, as camps are, are just about to open, you, uh-huh. this could arguably be one of the more, most intriguing preseasons, right? Like usually like preseason is like, ah, uh, who cares? Let's get to the season already. <laughs> right. But between the coaches and the incoming and the outgoing players, still big free agents on the table. Um, this is really interesting, right? Like, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, <clears throat> okay. I, I, long, long, long was obviously w- the biggest one, I think, mm-hmm. to this point, yeah. but there was no question he was moving. It was just a question of where, right? So um, who would land him? Um, and and for him, I mean, I, I mean, makes a ton of sense, right? Like, you go to the defending champions, a team you're that's younger, you're younger than Fialini. Most are. Um, you <laughs> you you know there's playing time to be had there. Um, you know you're you're uh, going to a team that's going to compete uh, on, on multiple levels. You're, it's a great stadium. Obviously, it's a city. He's a he's a, a Southern California guy, so um, it it ticks all the boxes for him. Um, Red Bulls are a team conversely now that are really quiet. You know, there's uh, talk of uh, Duncan coming back, but he was underwhelming um, when he returned from his loan. Right. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, the Red Bulls, uh, you know, in, in, in a, in a, in a preseason and an off season where there's been so much uh, noise, they've again been, been very quiet well and the the questions that i would have with aaron long one price point and i don't think that lafc has ever shied away from a price point because aaron long ain't going to come cheap and two the the idea of recovering from an achilles injury and you know is aaron long the same that he was, is he back to the 100% of Aaron Long before the procedure? And I think that that, you know, I I think those are probably the two questions that anybody has where Aaron Long is concerned, and you can apply that to to national team duty if you want. But since specifically we're talking about LAFC here, it's okay, we see Aaron Long, and we're going to grab him, and it almost seems like, okay, we're going to grab him so nobody else does, and then we'll figure it out. We'll figure the details out later. Price point, fine. We'll figure out where he fits, you know, when we get into training camp, you know? Yeah, I thought I thought he was um, – I thought he was very good for Red Bulls last year coming back from <clears throat> from that Achilles. Um, you know, th- there were obviously a couple of flubs here and there, and – Ultimately, I think it cost him minutes national team wise, but, um, you know, but how much of that is Achilles versus, you know, he's again, not that it's, uh, ancient for certainly for a center back, but he's 30. Right. Right. And he's not, he's not the guy who won defender of the year a few years back. Right. So, um, I don't think he's peak Aaron long when, you know, West Ham was calling a couple times and the Red Bulls decline those offers um but he's still obviously one of the uh elite center backs in mls and i think 
when you have an opportunity to get that guy, you you get him, right? So I think there was a handful of teams, you know, I mean, think about the teams that were right in the, again, LAFC and Seattle were in the mix for him. Um, two teams that splashed the cash and uh, have ambitions, right? So um, I think that uh, that that speaks volumes there. It, it would have been really interesting if you would, <laughs> can you imagine? If you went across to uh, NYCFC, how, how, how uh, yeah. that would have been interesting. Another, another team not afraid to splash the cash. You mentioned ambition, and this is something else that I wanted to, to get into with you this morning. Dylan Butler from MLSsoccer.com and OSDB Sports visiting for his Wednesdays with Dylan for the first time in 2023. Did you see the article out of Kansas City about how sporting tried to court Cristiano Ronaldo? Yeah. What did, you, what did you think about, and let's start, let's start at 30,000 feet on this one. What did you think about the idea outside of the fact that you know, I'm sure a lot of us in the back of our head were waiting for that moment when Cristiano Ronaldo was not going to play against Union Omaha in a U.S. Open, <laughs> US Open Cup match and Peter Vermes was going to, to have one of those looks that he gives from time to time. But from 30,000 feet, first and foremost, before we dive into it fully, what did you think about the idea about sporting Kansas City chasing after Cristiano Ronaldo? Um, a weird one, I for, for sure, for, for multiple reasons. One, from a team perspective, um, it's not quite, uh, it's certainly a departure of from what the, the, the player profile that that sporting has gone after. Right. So now in that sense, I, I would applaud them because um, if everything that we read uh, is true and I have, I, you know, I've got, uh, you, you've got multiple people, not just, um, you know, the Kansas city star, um, Taylor Twelman, uh, uh, Tom Boger, you know, like, so mm-hmm. <clears throat> when you, when, when you hear it from multiple people, people the same the same storyline i think i think this one is is true um so certainly departure player perspective why but but uh, i i applaud them for their again using the word of the day i guess ambition um but it doesn't like think about what what like, how what what does a player have to do on their peter vermes mm-hmm. they've got to run their you know what off yep. right uh-huh. Uh huh. And you've got to defend. Mm-hmm. That is uh, true. Yeah, I don't see that from from Ronaldo. And if he doesn't do it for yeah. Portugal, if he doesn't do it for Manchester United, why on a Wednesday night is he going to do it for Sporting Kansas City? Mm-hmm. Um, now, from a Ronaldo standpoint, um, you know, we, we hear the stories that, that so much, it was, uh, what was the quote? It was exactly what he was looking for or something to that effect. Yes. Now I've been to sporting, I've been to the area, uh, stadium wise, training facility wise. Awesome. Right. Like really, really good. Um, when I stayed in Kansas city, obviously I stayed in the other Kansas city. Um, I wasn't in Kansas city, Kansas, where, where the stadium is. Um, Hey, I'm a big fan of barbecue, right? So great barbecue there. Um, but I I don't see it fitting Ronaldo's lifestyle. Right. Right. Like, is he, is he like, this is a guy who, what he was in Turin, he was in Manchester. Um, so that struck me as a surprise. Like it wasn't like, I remember back when Michael Owen made a move to Newcastle, right? Like he he was still living in like Liverpool and he would helicopter in every day for training. <laughs> like, um, I, I don't see anywhere around Kansas city that like Ronaldo, it's not like he would go to like live in Vegas. Right. <laughs> and, like, yeah. And like take the jet in for, for training in the morning. So, uh, so from the, from the technical side of what Vermees wants to do and from the, lifestyle side of what I would suspect Ronaldo would, would uh, hope for those didn't make sense, but uh, fun story though, for sure. But what I wanted to get 
uh, the the opinion now on the both of you now that Jared has returned from the real world and is hanging back out with us here in hour number two. Well, everything it keeps is, breaking. What do you want from me? I know. People keep breaking news all around the damn league. I know. Time to calm down. I know. Well, actually, we like it when they break news during the show for a change because traditionally the news is broken about 11.05 when we're off the air. But, uh, you know, Jared, we're talking about the, the Cristiano Ronaldo uh, courtship from Sporting Kansas City and a CR37's group. And, and, you know, Dylan, what I wanted to, to ask as a follow-up is, I think what this does is it sets up Major League Soccer well as someone who is available for courtship. You know, they're, they're more than happy to, to come with the corsage, or, you know, whether it fits on the wrist or wherever it fits for the girl. For those stars that are 28 to 32, maybe an Olivier Giroud who's 36, yeah. where MLS, you know, sits there and, and you know, puts a, cro- a shot across somebody's bow and sits there. It's like, OK, fine. You a know, World Cup winner. Yeah. Tell you what, you know, rock and roll we will play and we're we're serious. And I, and I think that, you know, depending obviously on the circle that you're talking about, I think this can bode well for Major League Soccer down the line because. Hey, Sporting Kansas City thought said they were serious about Cristiano Ronaldo. But you can do the same thing with other teams for those players 28 to 32 or certain World Cup winners or, or very, very handsome men who still can score in the right situation. MLS is setting themselves up, I think, as a player for these kinds of transactions down the line with what they wanted to do and with the extent that Kansas City was looking to go to try to bring somebody in like that. For sure. And, and I think... <clears throat> You know, I, I, I haven't, I, I can't claim to, to, to say that I've, you know, I haven't been in every stadium. I've been to a lot of them. I haven't been to every training ground, but, you know, you see the, the images and the pictures and, and videos. I mean, I think, uh, I, I think infrastructure wise, MLS uh, has uh, made leaps and bounds, right? So, um, when you're one of these players, you know, those are things that are very important to you because obviously that's where you're going to work every day. Right. So, um, uh, and, and you hear from teams too, who come in, right. Like I remember, um, going to a Manchester city training session up, um, at NYCFC, at NYCFC's training facility. And they were saying how great it was, right. Like how, uh, it, it was, it was up to the same par as, as, as theirs. So, um, you're, you're getting that. And also, you know, you, you wonder maybe now this Apple TV deal where, um, you know, obviously in the U S in the North American market, you, you get that marketing, um, cachet, right. That extra help there, but also now with the ability to go to a, what is it? A hundred, uh, countries around the world. Um, you can continue to, showcase yourself as uh as a marketing tool in in all those different countries so um you wonder if that's now an added uh a bonus maybe for some of these guys yeah jared you know when you look at what kansas city did what sporting did in trying to court cristiano ronaldo and you see the the newer general managers like a john thorrington you know since we met just since we talked about aaron long and lafc and LAG in Toronto and all these different places, you have these markets that I think are willing to push the envelope in the future when it comes to transactions that are sizable transactions. And it's going to force Major League Soccer to do some thinking, even though they have this new TV deal and hopefully this new revenue, about maybe we need to expand the rules a little bit. We need to add that fourth DP. We need to get rid of the salary cap. It's I think that this kind of a thing from Sporting Kansas City might be forcing some thought in the 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 glass the glass tower in New York City. Yeah, and this is something we've talked about for a while that I've been hoping they would expand things out of it. You know, spend give, give teams the options to spend more money. If someone wants to ball the hell out, let them ball the hell out. Um, if someone wants to be more frugal and build from within, let them make that decision. Uh, but you know, I, I like the change in the approach here, though that. As you're shifting, when we sh- when we talked about like MLS moving out of the retirement league narrative, even though I mean it was 
it's already had been making that move when it went like it was one of those things where like the story was so far behind where it's like oh they're not a retirement like dude, they haven't been for like three or four years they've been bringing guys in uh, you can still get guys. You don't have to just target super young players. You can go get guys who are in their prime and guys who are not necessarily going to be the super superstars, but who can come in and be a bigger fish, but give them that opportunity where they can come here and live a different life. Um, Cause if you, I mean, you saw the article about it and we talked about it. Like you roll into Kansas city Unless you're Patrick Mahomes, like you, you have that opportunity to kind of be chill, or you have the opportunity to to kind of be out in front if you want to. It's a little easier to just live your life. Mm-hmm. It has to be appealing after a lifetime of everything you do is going to be on the back page of a tabloid. And, and you know, and you know, Dylan, as we continue to work this through. I guess we're workshopping the future of Major League Soccer here as we as we as we end your first Wednesdays with Dylan here in 2023. I, I I'm I'm a proponent of letting the reins go, 100. Because we know that there are owners that will sit there and push the envelope. You want to be a global brand. There's you know ways to be a global brand, but one of those is being able to attract that kind of talent and not necessarily while sporting Kansas City did this fantastic three dimensional approach. To where that is an I, that that is an option. It is not the only thing that you can do to bring in this kind of a talent. It, let it be a part of a package and an option plan, as opposed to the only way that things can happen. Listen, we've said this on on this show multiple times. Uh, I'm a big proponent of just going, uh, you know, luxury tax, right? Mm-hmm. Like set it at whatever you want it to be, and if you're willing to spend above that then that's fine. But, it, but I think, I think raising it, uh, I think will then force the teams that are on the bottom to, to, to raise as well. Right. Like, um, you know, this, I, I, I think, and we said it too, I think before, before, uh, you know, the last, uh, time we were on, I think before the uh, new year, mm-hmm. <clears throat> you, you're, you know, you're approaching like 50 games in a year. You've got to increase your roster. Um, you want to be a major player. You're, you're getting the attention now of, uh, as Jared said, not just these up and coming players, um, but also major global superstars. Um, doesn't have to be the NA, NA, NASL of the old days, right? But, um, you know, you. I think you're at a at a good spot financially as a league, where go ahead. You know, like I, I think raise the limit, um, become a global player, and and again, you know, set set the set the salary at whatever you want, but give teams the opportunity then to to go over that and and then and then pay the luxury tax. And, and you know, we we all. Are, are have seen the league grow to this point. Let me ask you this, and I'll let this be my last question because I know that you've got to go, and we've got to have you have we have to cut your promo for for uh, winter sports <laughs> this week. Uh, how much of a concern is it for you with all of these games, with the addition of League's Cup, with uh, you know MLS schedule, with U.S. Open Cup? How concerned are you about? injuries this year in in major league soccer because of a Seattle going to Morocco and starting early because of all of these tournaments, are are we going to, to have sadly another year where we could have some, some names and some big names and a lot of depth being taken out. How concerned are you about injuries this season with the current salary constraints and cap constraints and roster constraints that we have? Yeah. I mean, that wasn't, um, that's not MLS exclusive, right? We were seeing that throughout the world. Um, that was a big talking point, obviously going into the World Cup, right? Like having a World Cup when it was and really not having a break for players. And now players are coming back off the World Cup, also not getting a break. Now MLS in that standpoint is a little bit better situated than other leagues because it was that natural break because of the pushing up to the end of the season. But for sure, you're right. Like there's going to be a lot of games to be played 
um, a lot of minutes uh, taxing for, for, for guys, right? So I think managing, <coughs> excuse me, I think managing minutes is going to be a big, uh, a big talking point among, among technical staffs, right? Like figuring it out, you know, maybe a guy can go, uh, you know, 65 minutes on a Saturday, but only 25 on a Wednesday. Like, um, there's going to be a lot of the, and I, and I think the teams that do that well, I think will obviously now not have to deal with the injuries much. Now other teams sporting as a good example, um, he rarely rotates his roster. He's going to have to do, do, he's going to have to do that this year. Yeah. Uh, there's no doubt about it. So I think, I think, uh, it's going to force a lot of, uh, coaches who are used to maybe the same 11 to really not subbing too many guys. I think it's going to force them out of their comfort zone, or you're going to have a lot of those guys that you would normally, uh, rely on, on the, on the training table. All right, so the time to table, no doubt. Well, yeah, hey, we'd like to be on the training table, especially because <laughs> I haven't had breakfast yet. Uh, all right, so what's going on with the Varsity Media, MLSsoccer.com, OSDB Sports? Hit me. Yeah. Um, getting back into it, uh, first uh, broadcast will be next Tuesday coming back. Um, so it's been a nice break in that sense uh, as well. So uh, high school game at – uh, St. Raymond's at St. Francis Prep, my alma mater. So that'll be fun. Ah. Um, the uh, OSDB wise, I think uh, I think a lot of what we talked about today, I think we'll, we'll I'll dive into a little bit on my next my next article. Just sort of what are the more <clears throat> who are the more who are the teams that are more uh, most intriguing kind of going into the preseason, right? Like who's who do you keep an eye out out for the most? Uh, there um and and mls i you know we're continuing to uh there's there's a, a flurry there's a january flurry of, of activity going on so uh it's, it's going to be busy dylan underscore butler once again my friend thanks for coming on with us welcome back to 2023 welcome back to wednesdays with dylan and we will catch up with you next time where you will bring more chaos apparently everyone is sleeping in and now it's all on fire and so i give you all the credit be well my friend thank you i appreciate it